Hey guys, hello and welcome to Speedy Medical. In this video, we are going to take on the adult T cell leukemia. So let's get started. So in the previous videos, we have discussed the chronic leukemias which arise from the B cell. As I told you that the chronic leukemias, they are the neoplastic proliferation of the mature lymphocytes. And you know, the lymphocytes, they are of two types. That is the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. So, the chronic leukemias, they may arise from the B lymphocyte as well as from the T lymphocytes. Now, from the B lymphocytes, two type of chronic leukemias, they arise and these are the chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which we have already discussed in our first video. And this chronic lymphocytic leukemia is the most common leukemia in the adults. And the second type of leukemia which arises from these B lymphocytes is the hairy cell leukemia. And we have also made a video on the hairy cell leukemia and you can check it out in the description box. So, from the B cell there arise two type of chronic leukemias which are the chronic lymphocytic leukemia and the hairy cell leukemia. Now, the question arises about the T cell. Now, the chronic leukemia may also arise from the T cell and there are two conditions in which the leukemias they are derived from the T lymphocytes and these two conditions or two pathologies are first is the adult T cell leukemia and the second condition is called as mycosis fungoides. So in this video we will primarily focus on what is the adult T cell leukemia and what are the clinical features of adult T cell leukemia while in the subsequent videos we will discuss mycosis fungoids separately. So let's get started with the adult T cell leukemia. Now, now in the pathogenesis of adult T cell leukemia there is a virus which has a potential role. And this virus is called as human T cell leukemia virus. So this virus is called as human T cell leukemia virus. And as the name suggests, the human T cell leukemia virus is a virus which will infect the T cells. Now you know that T cells they are of two types that is the CD4 positive T cells and the CD8 positive T cells. Now this human T cell leukemia virus or HTLV, it will primarily infect the CD4 positive T cells and as a result of the infection of the CD4 positive T cells, after a latency period of approximately 10 to 15 years, there will be the neoplastic proliferation of these cells and this will lead to adult T cell leukemia. So this will lead to adult T cell leukemia. Now if I talk about this human T cell leukemia virus or HTLV, this human T cell leukemia virus is found in Japan and Caribbean islands. So in Japan and Caribbean islands, this human T cell leukemia virus is endemic. That means the infection is already present in those areas. While it can sporadically happen in the countries like America or some other parts of the globe. That means that the infection is not so common in America and other countries but it can happen over there sporadically. So this is the basic idea of the human T cell leukemia virus and as the human T cell leukemia virus infects there is a latency period that means there is a resting period of approximately 10 to 15 years and after that 10 to 15 years the disease full fledged disease will develop. Next we will talk about what are the clinical findings which are associated with the human T cell leukemia or the adult T cell leukemia. Now, like the leukemias, in this T cell leukemia, there will be lymph adenopathy, which means there will be enlargement of the lymph nodes. So, there will be lymph adenopathy, there will be hepatomegaly and there will be splenomegaly. And what is important to recognize in case of T cell leukemias and what hints that it is a T cell leukemia is basically that in case of T cell leukemias there are skin lesions. 
so there may be skin rashes or skin plaques or any other thing in case of these leukemias now also in case of t cell leukemias what happens over there is that there occur the lytic lesions in the bones that means there will be the lesions which will be bone destroying lesions so there will occur lytic lesions in the bone and as a result of these lytic lesions there will be hypercalcemia so this is another potential feature of the adult t cell leukemia now quickly we will talk about how do we make the diagnosis of t cell leukemia so for the diagnosis we have potentially two things one is the peripheral blood film and the second thing is immunophenotyping so in approximately all the leukemias we mainly rely on these two things that is firstly we will see the peripheral blood film and then we will do the immunophenotyping so in the peripheral blood film there will be leukocytosis and there will be the increased number of lymphocytes so lymphocytes will be particularly increased in the peripheral blood film and if we do the immunophenotyping then they will be positive for the receptors of t cells like cd2 to cd8 and also it will be positive the cells will be positive for cd25 receptors so these are the important immunophenotypic markers which can be helpful in differentiating this t cell leukemia from the b cell leukemias and also there is one important feature that is the skin lesions and the lytic lesions in the bone so this was all about the t cell leukemias i hope you like this video 